welcome to a review of the wonderful series of Vampire Diaries. I am Maddie Apostolers. I am Anne Johnston. Yes. Um, so the Vampire Diaries, it focuses on a group of teens and their deep family ties to the small town of Mystic Falls in Virginia, I believe, with its supernatural history. Um, the vampire powers include super speed and strength which is, you know, basic, but then we go into, like, mind control, which they call compulsion, um, immortality, but you can be killed by a stake to the heart and the sun. Um, vampire blood heals human wounds. We bring you the top ten most punchable characters, um, in the series. Start Number ten, Caroline Forbes is gay, vampire-hating dad. It's just, it's hard to watch her and listen to her. Yeah. And just not, I have to rein in the, the feeling of wanting to slam my laptop shut when she comes right. on screen. <laughs> right, yeah. And number two, we have uh, John Gilbert. <laughs> Nobody likes John Gilbert. I have, no, I have yet to meet a person who has appreciated yeah, the character of John Gilbert. The characters hate John Gilbert, so why should I, exactly? Yeah, no, that every time he speaks, I want to rip my hair out. <laughs> so good. Good. And you so, won't understand what we're talking about unless you watch the show. So now I guess you're just going to have to watch the show. Watch the show. It's a really good time. And especially in this time of coronacation. You're stuck inside. You're stuck inside. It's eight seasons of pure and exactly. utter entertainment. Exactly. Highly it's recommend. Like Hello, and welcome to the unofficial official review of The Politician Season 1. My name is Laura Street, and I am an amateur film critic and senior in high school. This comedy follows Ben Platt's character, Peyton Hobart, on his journey to becoming his school student body president. In The Politician, however, main character Peyton Hobart faces many adversities throughout his campaign, such as his competitors in the election, River Barkley and Astrid Sloan a popular couple at the Santa Monica school which they all attend. The show is especially interesting because despite the high school setting, it tends to stray away from teenage cliches. Prior to each episode, there is a viewer discretion message as it tastefully represents relevant issues in today's society such as mental health and violent tendencies. My personal favorite characters in the show were Peyton himself, River, and Alice Charles, Peyton's wise beyond her years girlfriend. An honorable mention is Jessica Lange's character, Dusty Jackson, who is intolerable, but somehow manages to keep everyone entertained. The cinematography and editing of the show were both top tier, flowing beautifully from scene to scene and doing the gorgeous California landscape justice. The Santa Barbara setting and costume design both further the theme of the influence of wealth and status. The more impressive aspect, however, is the multitude of songs that Platt or Peyton Hobart covered for this role. I am not so patiently waiting for a season two, and I suggest that you all watch The Politician if you haven't yet. And if you haven't yet, what are you doing? Thank you for watching my review of The Politician season one. This is Laura Street signing off. So, I will be reviewing Criminal Minds. My name is Brooklyn Canty. Um, this sh show aired from 2005 to 2020. There are many directors, so I couldn't pull out a single director to write down. Um, it aired on CBS. It's a crime drama, and in my opinion, definitely worth watching. This show revolves around a team of FBI agents that work for the Behavioral Analysis Unit. Um, so their job is to psychoanalyze serial killers, kidnappers, pedophiles, serial, serial arsonists, etc. So a bunch of different criminals. Um, so you're able to see like the inner workings of the characters and their relationships with each other without all of the annoying backstories. So my personal response and opinion, I highly recommend this show. It has 15 seasons, so you'll never, I mean, eventually you will run out, but you'll You'll, it'll take a while to finish the show, so you'll have something to watch for a while. Um, even though the actual crimes being committed are not like based on real crimes, um, they will compare them to real serial killers and stuff. So they'll like reference Ted Bundy um, when when working on a case. So you know you get to learn a little bit about different serial killers. This is it's so interesting the way they they're able to psychoanalyze the killers, but at the same time it's like. Should I really be entertained by this? Because, you know, we're seeing why killers kill people. Um, 
but you know I think it's very entertaining and I definitely recommend so yes I think all of you should go watch the show it's pretty good Goldfinger starring Sean Connery as James Bond my name is Griffin Raymond I'm a senior at Wando High School, and this is my movie critique on Goldfinger. Goldfinger, easily one of the best James Bond films ever made. It shows you the ins and outs of being a suave yet powerful spy. Now the plot, the plot of Goldfinger is simple. There's a bad guy who is obsessed with gold and wants more. He comes up with a plan that will lead to him getting more and more. His plan is to go into Fort Knox where we store all the gold and blow up all the gold so that his gold will be worth more and they will have to purchase his. The script of Goldfinger is absolutely amazing. Ian Fleming is a great writer and sadly he died before this movie was even released. Yet he wrote every single James Bond movie before he died and they still use the original scripts to this date. James Bond had his classic brand new suit and I mean never, never wrinkled always a perfect suit and lastly the the james bond soundtrack is possibly one of my favorite soundtracks of all time i listen to it just to listen to it this film is amazing and might be one of my favorite movies of all time i recommend everyone to watch it all right cut For a large duration of my hours spent in quarantine, I've been devoting my time to menial activities. Working out and getting cronked, focusing on my newfound religion, and obviously watching TV. But I'm not here to bore you with any lame utterances pretending to dumb stuff like Goldfinger. No. We're here for the good stuff. That's why I decided to watch all 61 episodes of Avatar The Last Airbender over the course of three days. For those interested by the end of my review, I watched Avatar through a marvelous seven-day free trial to Nick TV through Amazon Prime. But enough chit-chat, let's get to my review. It's so good. The leading cast is composed of... Mark Hamill's in it too, but we could go on for hours. Back when children's shows meant business, and were practically the Daniel Craigs of all other James Bonds, meaning the best, channels like Nickelodeon weren't afraid to take big risks. Risks, While the show had numerous directors, Avatar's most frequent director, Giancarlo Volpe, had only directed a couple episodes of King of Hill prior. As for head writer Aaron Ease, he had no credits at the time, but has since found even more acclaim for the Dragon Prince. I don't know. Some anime show. Kicking off from Snow and Puffles, Rubble and bombarded with a ton of filler episodes. I mean, holy heck, some of them just sucked. But if you sift through one or two boring episodes, you'll find yourself watching the second and third season. And holy shit, they're good. Like, really good. But as you progress to the later seasons, the fight scenes look amazing. The score is good, nothing to write home about. While fun, it really doesn't get the blood boiling at times when it should. Whatever. Close, when restarting the Avatar, I was very worried that it wouldn't hold up the same standards I had of it when I watched it six years ago. Like the older James Bond films, I was worried as time progressed it would get worse and worse. Gladly, I suspected wrong. The characters are great, the humor is humorous, Probably says a lot about me because it's still a kid's show. Whatever. And the story is absolutely amazing. It just sucks I didn't get to talk about the show in greater detail. There's a lot I missed. I didn't even mention Azula or Iroh. Both great characters. 10 out of 10. Watch it. Hello, my name is Madeline Sturdivant. I'm a senior at Wando High School and I will be attending the University of South Carolina in the fall of 2020. 
Uh, today I will be giving you a movie review of the film Knives Out, which was produced in 2019 by Lionsgate Production. It was directed by Ryan Johnson. Uh, it includes actors such as Daniel Craig, Tony Collette, Chris Evans, Anna Dar Moss, and Jamie Lee Curtis. The genre of this movie is a sort of mystery whodunit film with a little sprinkle of comedy. Uh, this film is about a detective that investigates the death of a patriarch of an eccentric, combative family, essentially interrogating all of the family members about who killed their grandfather. Uh, the writing and direction in this movie was pretty superb, in my opinion. Um, I enjoyed uh, the script, definitely very colorful. The acting, it's Daniel Craig's weirdly British and Southern fusion accent, uh, did not enjoy. Uh, to say the least. Cinematography and editing. During flashbacks in this movie, the style was a little bit more choppy, but during the present day filming after the death of the grandfather, uh, the cinematography was extremely fluid um, and often shots for different scenes were done in just one shot, moving from room to room in the mansion. Overall, it was a pretty entertaining movie. However, towards the end, it felt a little long. The acting style in general is not for everyone. It's a little less subtle than typical screen acting. It's very overdramatic, and some could say it was overplayed. However, I think it worked for the script. Um, overall, it was an aesthetically pleasing movie with lots of twists and turns, and I would recommend. Hello, my name is Riley Edenbeck. I'm a senior at Wando High School, and today I will be reviewing the television series Sherlock. The series began in 2010 and is produced by the, Br the British Broadcasting Corporation, or the BBC. This series has, a has seen a variety of directors, a new one with almost every episode. The lead actors are Martin Freeman and the infamous Benedict Cumberbatch, as we so like to say. It is a mystery crime drama based on the original writings of The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by creator Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. In my opinion, this series is absolutely genius. Um, it makes you think, and I could watch it a thousand times and pick up on new things I had not noticed before. This show has a very unique structure, with each season having three to four hour and a half long episodes. The plot to... to the plot depends on the episode as each follows a separate story, but the, prom the premise is the same. In my opinion, not a single moment of the series is boring and the dialogue and characterization are fantastic. The directing has a modern day spin and it utilizes screen text and unique shots that are just as skillful as the writing. All the costumes fit the nature of their characters, especially Sherlock's signature trench coat and deer hat. And being set in a fast-paced city like London adds to the energy of the production that's already made there by the actors. I adore the show and I highly recommend it to anyone who's looking for a fast-paced adventure story that will get your heart racing. And it's easy to see the talent and the amazing actors and I can guarantee you will not be disappointed with BBC's version of Sherlock. So, thank you.